Hey everyone, Angelo here. Welcome to another design tutorial. Today, I wanna to show you how to create universal scrolling frames in Adobe InDesign. I'm gonna show you how to create scrollable text frames or even use this method for an interactive menu. So let's get started. Okay, first and foremost, you're going to have to download the N5 InDesign to HTML5 extension, which you can find by going to Window and going to Find Extensions on Exchange. Now, I have already have the web page open. It's going to launch the extensions Adobe website. You can see in the top, the left hand side here, it's going to default because you open this up in InDesign. It's going to find the extension. Uh, applications for InDesign. Now if you scroll down just a little bit more you could see it's gonna pop up on the home page of the extensions for InDesign but for whatever reason if it doesn't just type in in 5 in the search bar and go ahead and search for it and there it is. It's a free uh, extension with um, membership or paid uh, application to it so there are some free features and one of them is uh, using the scrolling frames feature which I'm going to show you. So I've already acquired this but if you if you didn't have it you would just have to click free or uh, get extension whatever that says there go ahead and download it. Um, it would go ahead from there and it would automatically um, download the extension right into InDesign. Now if you have InDesign running you might want to uh, might want to just shut it down and then restart it. When you do, you're going to find that in your top uh, menu bar here, you will have now an N5 dropdown. And the one that we're going to be working with is in interactive widgets. Now the ones that say basic are free to use. Uh, Pro Plus is, um, you would have to buy a membership for that. Um, but let's go ahead and click scrolling frames under the interactive widgets uh, flyout. So I would click that. Now I already have it open. I already have it installed. When you, when you do this for the first time, you're going to get a window that says um, it's going to want your name and email. Just fill out that, that form, submit it, and in five will send you a manual setup for the scrolling frames panel. I'm not sure why they do it that way. Um, it's just an extra step that you have to take. But once you do that, it's a zip file. You download it and you can go ahead from there and you'll have the scrolling frames feature. Now that I have this open, I'm just going to leave it off to the side. And you can see on my page here, I have one uh, rectangle frame and just a small headline. What I want to do is create a scrolling frame that uh, scrolls horizontally and then we'll set up an object states system to have the uh, information down below up here um, in our menu scroll. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is make more copies of these two items here, these two objects. I'm just going to line it up to the margin and maybe have it set up like so. And then I'm going to just hold my option or alt on a PC and go ahead and drag out another copy. Let's go ahead and drag out another copy. And just make sure that when you're doing this, take a look at the smart guides for the distribution just to make sure that they're evenly spaced out. Now I know I'm going off onto the pasteboard and actually that's exactly what I want. I'm just going to create another copy and line it up. And then go ahead and make sure that it's evenly spaced. Let's see if I can get that. You know what I'm going to do actually. I'm just going to create groups out of these. And then I'll ungroup them in a, in a second. And let's go ahead. Just so I know that they're the right size here. And then I'm just going to shift them over. Perfect, so now I know that they are the evenly spaced and that's good. I can fix that after as well. 
Um, it's probably something around there. Perfect, okay. And I can fix the spacing afterwards and I'm just gonna ungroup all this again. That's option command G. And now let's go ahead and um, what we're gonna do is grab some images and then we're going to change these little headers within, within our menu here. So I'm just gonna grab four images and drop them in. So I have the images now in a loaded cursor and I'm just gonna drop them right into these four frames that I set up. I do want that one to go first. I'm going to just hit my right arrow because I want this image to go next. This is third. And we'll drop the last one in the last frame. And I do have some headlines here that I'm going to copy and paste into these text frames to update them. What I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna select all four together and I'm going to group them. So I'm gonna to go to Command G. You can also go up to Object and Group. Command G is uh, just a shortcut, which is better. And now what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna move this off to the side for now. And I'm gonna hold Shift while I do it so I don't lose, um, move it out of place. And I'm just gonna go to my Rectangle Frame tool and create another frame which is gonna be the container um, for these other uh, images that will become also my scrolling menu. So I'm gonna go back to my selection tool and click on my four images. Now because it's grouped, I can click anywhere I want and I can do Command X or Edit Cut. And I'm just going to click on this frame and right click and I'm going to paste into and you can see now I'm just gonna bring my in five scrolling frames panel up here and now you can see I, I have some actions here that I can um, adjust because I've I've turned this into a scrolling frame now before I do that if I click in here do you see it's out of place? So if I published this, it would actually start in this position and I don't want it to. So again, I'm holding shift and I'm just gonna shift everything over. I'm just moving everything over to the right because I want the user experience to be, this will be the first uh, part of the menu when you launch this, uh, this layout. If you left it like this, it would start in the middle. So you don't want that. So let's go ahead and just move it to the right. And if I go back now and click on the container frame, you can set the um, how you want this to be. So right now it's auto detect. Um, I'll, I'll put it on horizontal because it is a horizontal scroll. You can leave it on auto detect and let, let InDesign and In5 figure out which way your scroll will be. The scroll indicators are the actual, the ones that you grab and scroll, so you can hide them, but in this case, I actually want them to be be present. So um, you do wanna leave a little bit of space here so you can see how it looks. But what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go into any of my um, interactive panels and I'm gonna preview the work and see how it looks. So you can see here, we've set up the scroll system but now we're gonna set up object states to have an interaction with our menu as well as the content down below we're gonna turn our attention now on connecting the content within our scrolling frame with the content below it so these four images what which I've gone ahead and stacked on top of one another in order of how they appear in the scrolling frame menu and I've done the same with the information above. What I'm going to do is I'm going to select the four images together and I'm going to go to my object states panel which I'm going to tear off. If you don't have object states you can find it in window, interactive and then object states and I'm going to with those selected I'm going to make my way down to the bottom right hand corner of the object states window and I'm going to convert that into a multi-state object. And I'm going to rename this to main images. If you leave it 
object state three or object state four, you might run into some problems just like you would if you were creating buttons. So always rename these things when you're, when you're working. It's just gonna make life easier. Now, because I've gone ahead and reordered these uh, previously, you could see that they're in the order as they appear up top. Let's do the same to the information parts here. So I'm gonna highlight those and collect them. And I'm gonna turn those into object states. It's gonna come in as multi-state four, and I'm gonna rename that, um, let's just call it information. frames and they are in order of how they appear up top. So now we have two different uh, multi-state um, objects. We have the images and we have the, the information as well. Let's go ahead and open our buttons and forms now because we're going to need those. So let's go to window and go to interactive and open the buttons and forms panel. There's mine, I'm just gonna tear it off and include it into that one, combine them. And let's create buttons out of these images first and then work our way down. So because these are in this container, you're going to have to kind of double click and then double click again to drive into, you might have to double click quite a few times because it's in the container and then it's grouped and then it's grouped again. So do a double click, double click, double click, and that will get you right into that image. You can see that is now highlighted with the frame. I'm gonna go ahead and create that into a button. And I'm gonna rename that into color image button. And on release or tap is fine. Now here's where you're going to add an action of going to a multi-state or go to a state, I should say. So click, click the plus symbol and work your way down to go to state. Now keep in mind, this says EPUB only. So if you're trying to do object states in a PDF, it will not work. You're better off using the show hide buttons and forms at that point. So um, let's go ahead and create a state here. And the state that I want to have it trigger is opening up the main images object. And I want it to go to state one. You could see the little thumbnails there, which help you as you're setting these up. So you don't necessarily have to rename the states within the objects, but um, I mean, that always helps. State one is what I want, but I also have to add a, a secondary state to this. Otherwise this won't, there won't be an action on the actual information. So let's go ahead and create another state, um, another action to go to state, but this time we want it to go to the information frames and I do want it to go to state one. Let's go ahead and repeat that same process for the other three. So drive into that, that image. You're gonna have to double click a few times, go to button and change this to um, simple button on release or tap is fine. Let's go to state, main images, but in this case we want state two. And also create another action to go to a different state of the information frames and change that state to state two. So you can see your history here if you miss a step, just make sure that you're following your little history guide here and then go ahead and update as needed. Now, what do I have to do here? I have to click on here. Now, if I put, no, that won't work. What I'll have to do here is shift everything over. Now, remember when you're shifting everything to the, to the left, hold your shift key and then drag so you're not altering um, its movement, movement from a vertical scale and it's staying aligned to the position. Let's go ahead and drive into this frame here. Create that into a button. This one is typography button. Add a state 
add an action, go to state, main images, this is state three, add another action, go to state. This time we're going to information frames, state three. We have one more to go here. So it's a few, it's a few times that you have to double click. So just remember that button. And this is image, how about imagery button? You can call these whatever you want. Just make it something that you can remember and something that makes sense. Let's add an action to go to a state. Actually, I'm gonna go back one here. Yeah, perfect. So let's add an action to go to a state. This will go to main images, state four. It's also going to add another state here to go to information frames and go to state four. Okay, and there's one more thing I'd like to do just to add a little bit, um, a little bit more creativity to this is I've showed you how to do this in the past to create a rollover effect on these, um, these buttons that we've created. So go ahead and drive into each one again and create a rollover appearance. Go to the normal appearance, I guess if you wanna call it a state, and change it to 75. So we don't want a drastic rollover appearance, but something like this, where it's ever so subtle, but you can tell. All right, let's go ahead and do it to the others. So click rollover, go back to normal and change the normal opacity to 75. We have to shift this back. So remember, just double click. You could see that I've, I have the whole bar selected and I'm going to hold my shift key as I'm dragging. You could see it's not moving out of place and I could just slide it over. Let's drive into this first image and add the rollover effect to that button. Go back to the normal appearance and give it a 75% opacity. And let's do it to this last one. Give it a rollover appearance, click on normal, and then go ahead and give it a 75% opacity to that. Now let's go ahead now and take a look. Um, let's preview this here and see if everything's functioning. This is the perfect opportunity for you to test things out before you publish it. You don't want to go ahead and publish things and then realize, oh, I missed that. So that's why the, the preview EPUB um, viewer here is helpful. So the scrolling frame works just fine. It doesn't appear as if my rollovers are working, so I'll have to fix that. But the actual, the buttons themselves work. Maybe the rollovers are working and I just can't tell. Maybe the, the, appear, the appearance of the opacity isn't as strong. But let's go ahead now and publish this online and see how it looks in a web browser as well. So I went ahead and published this online. You can see how it looks in a web browser. Now this is in full screen mode. I'm going to go ahead and scroll through my menu here, my scrolling frame that we set up. You could see that the rollover effect works on each of the buttons now. And I can click on these individually and our object states that we set up now has this set. So when we click on it, it has each image appear, corresponding image, as well as the uh, information that goes with it. So that's how you set up a scrolling frame in Adobe InDesign and then apply those object states to it to give it a more interactive look and uh, a better user experience overall. So that's how you create a universal scrollable frame in Adobe InDesign. If you enjoyed this tutorial, if you found it helpful, give it a thumbs up and don't forget to hit the subscribe button to get notified when new videos are posted.